What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Danny and Bush coming at you with episode 52 of Dynasty Decisions. As you guys know, we did Dynasty Decisions all of last week. It was a blast. You know, shout out to the winner of the Amazon gift card. Still got to get that to you. But um, basically what we're doing today, you know, recapping some more teams because we did Dynasty Decisions all last week. A lot of you guys wanted your teams covered, so we definitely have some more submissions in the queue. But um, before we get into it, as always, if you guys enjoy this video, like, comment, subscribe. If you want to be on future episodes of Dynasty Decisions, you guys know how to get in touch with us. Our patrons get first priority. Link down below for that. Twitter and Discord, um, email, all that, um, you know, those ways you can get in contact with us to be on a future episode of Dynasty Decisions as well. So that being said, Danny, how you doing? Doing well, doing well. And yeah, uh, huge busy week from you guys last week. Uh, a lot of submissions that we went through. I think, I mean, what? We went through, what, four episodes eight submissions per episode. So we covered over 30 teams just last week and heck of a lot more in the queue ready to roll. So yeah, I'm good. It's a ton of fun just being able to hop on here. Let's be honest, being able to hop on here, being able to go through dynasty scenarios, dynasty trade questions. Where should I take this team? Because ultimately here, me and Corey are just both degenerates that love talking dynasty. Yeah. And uh, we're getting into redraft season soon, right? It's you know June 13th as we're recording this right now. So Um, we're going to start getting into, you know, training camps and, you know, OTAs, like OTAs already been going on mini camps going on right now. But once we get into like training camps, then we're going to start getting into, you know, best shape of his life season, you know, LaVisca Chenault, I'm sure. And Tutu Atwell are going to be the highlights of the Roto world clips and all that kind of stuff. So I'm super excited for it. We're going to limit the dynasty content a little bit and focus, start to gear towards more redraft content. This week, we'll be bringing you guys our early redraft rankings, top 12s by position in our redraft rankings manifesto should be dropping, I don't know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week on our Patreon. So um, stay tuned for all that. But before we get into it, let's hit the intro. All right, so let's start off with C. Will's team. As always, we start off with the patrons. One quarterback, tight end premium, 12-team PPR league. You guys can see the team on the screen there. Russell Wilson as his man QB with Mac Jones in the uh, in the uh, the wings there. Eckler, Javante Williams, Leonard Fournette, Tony Pollard, A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, D.K. Metcalf, Jalen Waddell, et cetera, at wide receiver, and then Albert O., David Njoku at tight end. Doesn't have his first-round pick in the rookie draft this year. 205, 301, and 405 doesn't have his first in either of the next two drafts, either uh, in 2023 or in 2024, but he does have two seconds in 2024. So uh, what are your thoughts initially looking at this team? Uh, Some of the questions that he has, and we'll we'll roll through some of these trades as well. Yeah, looking at this team, I mean, it's a very, very strong uh, team from a redraft standpoint, top 10 quarterback, two running back or three running backs that you should figure to be in the, I mean, Javante, maybe not on the same level of a Fournette and Eckler, but if Javante hits, he could very well also be a top 10 running back. So you have three locked and loaded studs there. Wide receiver, I mean, A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, D.K. Metcalf, Jalen Waddle, like you are living lavishly right there. And then at tight end, it's a bit more of a question mark, but I am a fan of David and Joku. Um, I, I will say, though, this is a weak point that I would look to try to correct, especially in season. I mean, uh, a prime example would be, you know, as soon as you're able to go after a guy like Rob Gronkowski, I, yeah, I think that was my first. Would be... I would trade my 301. Like you have the 301 in your rookie draft right now. It's a tight end yep. premium, so I don't know if that gets it done. Maybe you have to throw in the fourth rounder or something too. I'd easily give my 301 and my 405 for Rob Gronkowski right now because when he comes back, and I do think he's going to, he's going to immediately upgrade that tight end position in a tight end premium league. He's going to be a threat to score 12 receiving touchdowns this year with Godwin, you know, on the mend at the beginning of the season. I don't think Rob Gronkowski is going to retire. If Tom Brady wasn't there, it'd be a different story, but. With Brady back, I, I saw a report from The Athletic that most teams and beat writers believe that Rob Gronkowski is going to come back this year. So um, that'd be this the tight end upgrade I would look towards. I would also inquire about Zach Ertz, too, if uh, potentially the That's Gronkowski awesome. owner, uh, doesn't want to give you him. Maybe you I, you might not be able to get Zach Ertz for the 301. You'd probably have to give up something a little bit better than that. But the other thing, too, is you have the 205. I don't mind just taking Trey McBride with that pick. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, he actually does have a few questions here as well. He says, my goal for this team is to become a multi-year winner. What are some adjust, adjustments I can do to help reach that tier of dominance in your league? So basically what you're saying is you're more willing to sacrifice some points this year to ultimately increase the longevity in this team. If that is the case, as much as I love Austin Eckler, I am gauging relative value around him. If you can, you might be able to get, you know, Saquon Barkley and a little plus attached to him 
for Eckler. You can just point out to the fact that Eckler was a top three back last year. Somebody might be willing to buy into that point production. Then you still get access to that elite ceiling. Even if it's Saquon Barkley in the three, like I'm taking that all day. I have Saquon Barkley ahead of him in my ranking. So that's a transition I like. Another I one that I would be able to get Brees Hall straight up for Austin Eckler legitimately. If you can do that, you smash that and you take. But like that's bank. a legit. Like if if your league is more of a redraft centric league, it's a rookie running back. Maybe they don't really follow the NFL draft. They don't really know who Brees Hall is. He plays for the New York Jets. They might, you might be able to make that transition one for one. Yeah, if you can do that, or heck, I would be willing to give up the two hundred five, the three hundred one, four hundred five, whatever you have to do to attach to get that. Like I'm, I'm fine with doing that for a guy like Brees Hall. Or you could go up to maybe Swift or Najee with with those guys. Yeah. Get a little bit young. If you could trade Eckler in the two hundred five for Najee Harris or DeAndre Swift, I would, I would definitely do that. That keeps you in a competitive window, gets you younger, and also Devonte Adams would be a guy that I would inquire about. Maybe you can get a little bit younger on him as well. Because if you can trans, I mean, you already have Metcalf, but he would be the perfect guy to transition to. If you can transition from Devontae Adams to Deontay Johnson and get maybe a second might be on top to, of yeah. Deontay Johnson, I think that should be a, a move that you might be able to make. I will say, though, I'm more willing to keep Adams in this scenario because he is a wide strong. receiver. So it's it's yeah, less and, likely that he's going to like fall off or something. And yeah, I've warmed up a little bit, too. I mean, he is signed for the next five years. It's not like we're, we're concerned of like a Julio Jones type of situation because of the financial commitment that we've seen from the Raiders, uh, in com- conjunction with the fact that Devontae Adams put it, put it simply, has shown no signs of declining. So, yeah, no, it's probably a fair value deal if you want to do that. I, I don't mind it. Or maybe you can go after Deontay plus a young wide receiver. Maybe that person's willing to give you Deontay and what Darnell Mooney, Deontay and Amonra, Amonra, Deontay plus like that type of wide receiver. And if you could do that, increase your depth, be able to have another stud wide receiver uh, in that core to potentially contend because again this is a three flex league so um depth should not be taken uh lightly in this type of league because you want players that can step in immediately and produce because ultimately here like yeah you want top end studs because top end studs win you leagues but at the same time don't ignore depth to be able to do that and the way you've built tim it patrick is already and good, kendrick but... born are like our staple depth guys you're a tim patrick guy i'm a kendrick born guy those are good <laughs> like if you need them in a fill in in a pinch, you can throw those guys into your flex spot and they should be able to get you some point production. So let's uh let's look at some of these trades that he has yep. here. Um so the first trade he got Leonard Fournette and the Love 301 it. in exchange for Miles Gaskin, Mike Williams and the 305. Fournette versus Williams to me is kind of a wash, I would say, but given that you before this trade didn't really have like a consistent RB3 yeah. that you could throw into your lineup, I think that's a solid move for you there. Um and then the 301 for Miles Gaskin, the 305 again. Maybe sure. you side with the Gaskin side there, but given your need, like no. your need, I would say for a running back, you probably um, give a little lenience to the Fournette side of that. F- the first way you break that down, Gaskin does nothing to me. That that Gaskin, yeah, does now, like now me. that they've added Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert and Sony Michelle, like he is really, really buried on that depth chart. If this was last year, then obviously Gaskin had a lot more value, but hopefully you sold him last year. Yep. Uh, the next deal, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of. Uh, you gave up Elijah Moore in a 2023 first in exchange for uh, Jalen Waddle, um, a 2023 three and four. Realistically, I mean, maybe I'm I'm bullish on Elijah Moore, but I realistically think the difference at most is probably Elijah Moore in a two to transition up to Waddle. So that 2023 first is going to keep appreciating and keep gaining value that I do think you sold low on uh, the two assets that you gave up here. Yeah, and I think if you were going to go for another like wide receiver upgrade from Elijah Moore, because maybe you didn't believe in like the short-term view of him, I think you maybe should have went for someone a little bit more win now than Jalen Waddle, because Jalen Waddle is also a young receiver. But I think you probably could have gotten like I don't want to say Debo Samuel, but like you might have been able to get that for like Elijah Moore in a first. You might have been able to at least with Debo Samuel, you're still pretty young and you're a better win now asset than Jalen Waddle. I think Higgins or Lamb would have probably been like that trend. Right, but if, if like worst case that. scenario, I think Debo Samuel, maybe even Cooper Cuff, if you wanted to go really for a, for a win now piece. <laughs> I'm just not a fan of giving up that type of liquidity at this point in the off season because again, like although you're trying to compete, that 2023 first is going to keep gaining value. Um, whereas you know, if anything happened to Waddle or. But Tua missed a few games or something like that. Like, there's a lot more risk, a lot more volatility at that point to be making that move in June. So, I mean, either way, I don't think you got absolutely hosed on this deal because uh, Waddle's still going to be a cornerstone type of player for you. So, although you overpaid, at least you're still getting an asset that's going to hold its value for a while. But I do prefer the Elijah Moore side on this deal. Next deal, I don't mind it. Like, 
genuinely like two firsts seems like a lot, but realistically a 2022 first, assuming that's mid to late, like see the, the only you... thing I would say about it is because he has the two Oh five and four Oh five. Does that mean that that pick that you gave up was the one Oh five? I'm not too sure. Uh, he didn't let me know there. Uh, he didn't let me know where it was. So if that was a late first. I'm, I'm totally cool with this deal, That's but if I mean. that was like the one Oh five, I probably wouldn't have done this. Agreed. If that was the one Oh five, that that'd be a little steep. Cause I mean, you're still talking Traylon Brooks or Garrett Wilson, which go about a, a round after, uh, Adams in, in startups right now. So giving up a, a first for a second at that point, but if it's like, you know, the one Oh eight and you're talking sky more and a first for Adams in a second, like, yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Give me Adams. Just give me yeah, Adams at so, that point. Yeah, pretty solid trades, I would say, given your given your team position. Yep, for sure. We can transition to uh, the next patron question. That's going to be from uh, Field. Uh, you guys should be able to see his team on the screen. 12-man, uh, one quarterback league, and it is standard. So you guys can see the rest of the settings there. Quarterback, he does have Patrick Mahomes as his main starter with Tua in the wings. Running back, Jonathan Taylor, James Cook heading that group. Wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, Jalen Waddle, Chris Olave, Gabe Davis, etc. There, and then at tight end, you have the gold standard of tight end and fantasy Kyle Pitts, along with what looks like all of his picks plus an extra four in 2023, all of his picks except for his five in 2024, and all of his picks in 2025. So overall, we'll go through the questions, but uh, what are your thoughts when looking at this team right away? The, my thoughts are like you go position, the, the first player at every position across the board is very, very encouraging, right? You got the, you know, a top three quarterback in uh, fantasy here. You got... Jonathan Taylor is the RB1 in Dynasty. You got Justin Jefferson, who's the wide receiver one or two in Dynasty. And you got Kyle Pitts, the consensus tight end one in Dynasty. So at the top, you got the studs, obviously, right? And he, he says it too. He's like, I did very well in my startup draft, somehow landing all those guys. So within a startup, this is really strange how you did this. I'm assuming you traded up a lot of your mid-round picks to land these studs. You maybe like sold your third. Probably pick, last year. Whatever. Probably oh, okay. So he got these guys in the in the startup last year. That makes a little bit more sense because yeah. most of these guys have a first round startup ADP. I guess Mahomes in a one quarterback league probably doesn't, but uh, either way, I think you you've definitely secured a great foundation for this team. He says at the moment I'm thin at running back and running kind of like a hero RB. Definitely would agree with that assessment there. So I have a bunch of backup running backs and some upside rookies as well. Should I trade Jonathan Taylor for 2023 picks? and build out my running backs in that draft class, something like if I can get three first-round picks for him or two firsts and a young player to compete in 2023? Or should I stay patient with this core, continue with the Hero RB, and build on top of those four foundational pieces through future drafts? Three 2023 firsts, I'm smashing except for Jonathan Taylor, and I'm not thinking twice about it. Like If you're getting offered three 2023 first-round picks for Jonathan Taylor, there should be no hesitation. You should be willing to package any single player apart from four or five overall players in dynasty for even in a one cornerback league. I think it's three players. Hmm? I, I think it's Pitts, Jefferson and oh, Chase in a one quarterback format. I think those yeah. are the three guys that I would I, probably not take just three first round picks for. I, I, I was, I was in the super flex frame of mind. So, I mean, yeah, you are right in a one quarterback league. It's just those three. Um, yeah. If you can get three first for Jonathan Taylor, like sign me up. I'm, I'm taking that. Like, yeah, it does get a little bit of a sting in the class. Cause you're not getting, you know, Stroud and young pushing some players down, but assuming those are three random 2023 first, like you could be walking out of your draft with, let's say one of them's early, one of them mid, and one of them is late. Let's say you're walking out of your draft with Kayshawn Boutte, um, JSN and John Sean Tucker. Tucker. Like yeah. I love Jonathan Taylor, but for me, it would just be bad process to not take that package. Yeah, yeah, and it, maybe you get one of those picks in the 2024 class or something like that too, and you got a shot at one of those dudes in that class. So yeah, if, th if you can get three ones for Jonathan Taylor or two firsts in a meaningful other player, not like a, a just a random other player, Elijah then Moore. I would uh, I would say that's a pretty solid move. But I don't think it's a completely outrageous strategy to just play with house money this year, run a hero RB. You got a very young team going into the second season for guys like Chris Olave and some of those dudes, and you add another maybe you know you add a Sean Tucker with your first rounder in next year's class, then you could be well set up to compete uh, at a high level next year too. So I, I don't think it's out of the range of outcomes that you just hold with this team and see right. how it does. But if you can get three ones for Jonathan Taylor, I would sell them. I'm accepting that. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Uh, and I think you can, in a one quarterback league, get three ones for Jonathan Taylor. So um, yeah, uh, give, give, give me uh, the picks all day, every day there. Um, you add what will end up being four 2023 first, like, that point, hey, yeah, you're getting. I mean, your your team's probably going to be closer to like the one oh what, one oh five to one oh nine range. I'd say this team probably finds itself because yeah, of the somewhere like that. 
Um, yeah, because of the depth, especially if you lose Jonathan Taylor. So you're still going to get a mid first with your own pick for the most part. And then assuming again, one of those first, you could potentially get, if you get a top three pick, I mean, it's all chalked. It's all, you're, you're parlaying that into so much more value, um, with those three first than Jonathan Taylor would net you on his own by this time next year. So yeah, although it sucks losing a guy, a cornerstone top three overall pick, like or top four overall pick, like Jonathan Taylor, like. Yeah, three first, easy. No, no, no question. Yeah, so definitely gauge the market, see what you can get. If nobody's willing to give you that kind of package for Jonathan Taylor, then I would just hold and kind of play with house money this year. So uh, let's move on to Anthony's team. Um, basically, just a trade question here. Um, some back and forth discussions with another manager. This is the initial deal that he sent the guy, and it wasn't accepted, which is cool. I like that um, Anthony included this part because this is a process that most of us find ourselves in within trading is there's usually not like you send one deal and the guy accepts it right away. There is usually... A negotiation uh, that happens. So the initial deal that he sent was he'd be receiving the left side here, Jonathan Taylor, 108, 208, 308, and Zach Ertz in exchange for the 104, 204, a 2023 first, a 2023 third, and Foster Moreau. So basically what he says is that this guy really likes Garrett Wilson, I guess, and he wants to go up to 104 to make sure he secures Garrett Wilson. Then obviously he'd be downgrading from the 104 to like the 108, which would be, you know, Sky Moore, um, Jameson Williams, Chris Olave. Uh, that initial deal was not accepted. Instead, what the guy wants to do is this new deal, which is uh, the same side that he'd be getting, Jonathan Taylor, 108, 208, 308, and Zach Ertz. But instead of giving up the 104, he'd be giving up Deontay Johnson. And instead of a 2023 third, he'd be giving up a 2023 second. So it is basically the same deal, except the third becomes a second and Deontay Johnson instead of the 104. So uh, would you accept this new deal if you're in uh, Anthony's shoes here getting the Jonathan Taylor side? You could make the argument that Jonathan Taylor himself is probably worth that whole other package to be honest like you can make that argument like yeah we would personally lean on the side of not paying you know two ones and two twos for a running back but that's probably about his relative market value so to me i mean diami brown and foster Moreau, I, don't, I don't care i'd rather have Ertz than both of those guys so yes. that, that cancels each other out so you're getting a free one two and three for the most part, given market Yeah, value. yeah, I would say, J, like, at, at minimum, JT in the 108 balances out this deal, and, and you get the rest of the stuff as gravy. Pending how the draft goes, maybe you can end up parlaying. I mean, would you give up the, the 108 market? into a 2023 first or something? Uh, if somebody loves Jamison Williams and he slides, or somebody loves Chris Olave and he slides, you can just get a random 2023 first instead of the 108. Even that would make a ton of sense as well. Even if you have to throw in the 308 to get that done, like heck, I would probably be willing to give up the 208 to get that done. But you're probably going to only have to pay max 108 and 308 and get a 2023 first, especially from someone that thinks that can they can probably contend next year. That's probably about the value you can get. And if you're telling me JT, maybe you can even just sell the 108 for a player too. If you if if you're trading for Jonathan Taylor, I'm probably going to assume that you're contending. And if you can just trade the 108 for Keenan Allen or Mike Evans or something straight up, then just do that. Also, yeah. I agree. I again, I can't speak on the other owner in your league, but I will say this is a very, very favorable deal on your end. So, um, yeah, yeah, definitely, great job. I think you uh, definitely that was good negotiation. I like how you kind of detailed the whole process there. Um, and he also kind of talked about like the the semantics of like the guy thinks that Deontay Johnson's going to be a little bit less valuable with Kenny Pickett or whatever. Let that guy talk himself into whatever he wants to talk himself into. Garrett, well, he doesn't want Garrett Wilson because of Zach Wilson, whatever the case is. I would, you know, rather just do the uh, second trade there. Um, before we get into the non patron questions, as always, got to pay some bills around here. Hear from our sponsors over at Manscaped, especially before we get into it with Father's Day coming up. You guys definitely want to pay attention to this one. All right, fellas. Father's Day is around the corner and our friends over at Manscaped have a special Father's Day offer. The Performance Package 4.0, which includes the signature Lawnmower 4.0, is the perfect bundle to tackle any and all old man hair from head to toe. This right here is no dad joke. Treat him and yourself and join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. You can get 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code Bush at manscaped.com. And trust me, his dad bod will thank you. If you guys have a dad like mine, he probably grew up in the 70s and 80s, has no idea what to do with his body hair. Manscaped is designed with fathers in mind. The Performance Package 4.0 is here just in time for Father's Day. Inside this package, you'll find the Signature Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, 
Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Brief, and a travel bag to hold all of those goodies. First off, let me start by saying the Lawnmower 4.0 will be the official MVP of Father's Day. Our fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. And their Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 4. 100k led spotlight in case he needs more precise trimming your dad probably uses the same trimmer for his body and his face right now we can probably just throw that out the window on top of all of that manscaped has just launched their brand new boxers 2.0 and we all know that the dads love their comfort with the summer just around the corner the boxers 2.0 are here to save your dad from the uncomfortable heat these new boxers are packed with revolutionary features including the jewel pouch and not the vape the the family jewels which is exactly what it sounds like whether he's mowing the lawn taking out the trash doing dad things golfing in the sun these moisture wicking boxers breathe without breaking a sweat dads buy this for yourself sons buy this for your dads and ladies if you're listening to this buy this for your man 20 percent off plus free shipping using the promo code bush that's 20 percent off plus free shipping with the promo code bush screw the ties get your dad something he actually needs this father's day all right, so a big thanks to Manscaped. We appreciate them for sponsoring the show. Now let's get into the non-patron questions. First one here from Luke Strong. Uh, you guys can see the team on the screen. He says that it is not a Superflex league yet, but they are moving to a Superflex after this year. I would say that you did the smart thing, which was go out and acquire the elite quarterback assets before they became super valuable. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Derek Carr, Davis Mills is your top quarterbacks. Carson Wentz is your QB5 too. Um, great quarterback, uh, looking quarterback core there. Jonathan Taylor, Leonard Fournette, Antonio Gibson, Damian Harris, Kareem Hunt, et cetera, at running back, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, CeeDee Lamb, T. Higgins, Drake London, Chase Claypool, Wandell Robinson, et cetera, at wide receiver. Dawson Knox is your main tight end. Also some IDP, uh, IDP players there. Basically wanted to know uh, what we would say about his team. Well, for starters, your team is very good. Off-season trades he has here listed. Um, I'll kind of break these down in a second. I'll, I'll just get your thoughts real quick on uh, the, the team in general. Yeah, I mean... What like Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Derek Carr, Davis Mills? Like, okay, you can sell Davis Mills and Carson Wentz. Probably um, once people realize it's going to be a super flex after the year in season. Um, I mean, you could stress that point. Hey, this is going to be a super flex this year. Davis Mills is a young quarterback. Carson Wentz, he should be the starter, or maybe not in DC, but long term, he should be a at minimum bridge quarterback level starter. So you could probably get value for them in season. But regardless, I mean, the fact that you left your draft or left your off season for the most part with Allen Mahomes and Carr, a very, very strong core to say the least, uh, running backs. I mean, Taylor Fournette, Gibson hunt. Yeah. Like you're, you're fine there receiver. I mean, you have two of the top five wide receivers this year. I mean, you can make the argument that CD lamb's also a top six receiver. So, and T yeah, like this, this team is nuts. Like this team is just flat out nuts. Um, he kind of lists a couple deal uh, deals here too. He also mentions a quick shout out that he is in the league with uh, Wesley Fox, which is a uh, you know a, one one of our subscribers that we viewed. I believe we broke down his team on the last episode. Last too. episode, so I don't know exactly. if this is the same league or whatever, but um, let's break down some of these deals. He lists a lot of them here, so I'll kind of just get you like a yes or no answer on some of these, so we don't take up too much time. But uh, Donovan Peoples Jones for the three hundred one. It doesn't look like he has DPJ on his team, so I'm assuming you traded him away for the three hundred one. So yeah, give me the three hundred one there. Yeah, then the second deal here, it looks like he traded away McLaurin, J.K. Dobbins, and the 106 and 103. So, decent amount of capital to give up for sure. For Jonathan Taylor, the 110, 204, 205. Um, so, I mean, realistically, the 106 is probably, what, 110 and 205? Give yeah, probably something like that. 110 and 205, so that cancels out 106. Then you gave up McLaurin, Dobbins, and the 103 for J.T. and the 204. I think the value sides with the McLaurin side, but like given your team structure, getting a yeah. stud running back like Jonathan Taylor, I understand the move. I think he this, gave up a little too much, but I, I don't think it's, you know, outrageous given the structure of your team. Yeah, this is probably, yeah, a, a little too much for me. But I probably would have wanted like instead of the 204, 205, like a 2024 20, first. first. Yeah, or something. You're not going to get 2023 20, first, but maybe a 2024 20, because somebody's going to view that as out of sight, out of mind. I doubt you'd get it because if, if you got a 2023 20, first, like I would smash the JT side. Um, whereas 24, 205, whatever. Um, yeah. He, but he ended up flipping uh, most of the package that he got in the Jonathan Taylor trade 110, 204, and 301 in exchange for the 107, 
and Ayuk, and Alave was the 107. So it's basically the 10, uh, 110, yes. 204, and 301 for Ayuk and Alave, which what? if you just throw that basically on the end of this trade, then it looks a lot better. So yeah, uh, like, I definitely love that side for you. Well, look, so you're telling me right now that, okay, first of all, 107 over or 107 over 110, I mean, that's easy. But for ease sake, let's just say they were even, which obviously they are not because 107 is greater than 110. You got Brandon Ayuk for the 204 and the 301. Yeah, I Ayuk, that? man, he's one of those dudes that everybody's just completely down on. They don't realize he was a top 15 receiver once he got out of the doghouse. Of yeah, Kyle that's... Man. Uh, this ridiculous. one is just a really proactive move. This was super smart of you. Two first for Patrick Mahomes. Overpay no, right now because it's not a super flex, but it will not be an overpay a year from now. It'll be an underpay. And Alave, but I agree. Yeah. Alave is probably realistically. Alave 107 part. Yeah. He traded Alave as well. Oh, right, right. Okay. So he traded Alave and two first for Patrick yeah. Mahomes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. The next trade he has here is basically Fields, a 2023 third for Drake London, Wandell Robinson, and Davis Mills. So, again, you give up Fields, who's going to have more value once it goes to a Superflex, but Drake London and Fields are relatively similar in value even in a Superflex league. You get Wandell Robinson and Davis Mills on top of uh, that side to kind of balance things out. I think that's a pretty fair trade. Yeah, I mean, in your situation with your quarterback core, I'm I'm fine with it. Um, Realistically... Drake, like even like if you wanted to put what Drake London and Davis Mills equal Justin Fields, let's just save that for ease sake, given startup value right now. Let's say that's even. I mean, realistically, Drake London's you know a three four turn type of guy. Justin Fields usually goes early to mid third, so we'll say Davis Mills is an eleventh round pick, and that makes up that difference. I would rather Wandale over a twenty twenty three third, um, especially if it's just you know a random third. Uh, mm-hmm. I would rather just Wandale Robinson. I know he's a good player right now. Um, and I can cash that in. I could probably, you know, if Wandale Robinson shows out at the beginning of the season, cash that in for, um, at minimum, an early to mid projected 2023 second, which I would rather obviously over the third. So give me the Wandale side here. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, obviously your team is very strong, Luke strong, uh, you know, pun intended there. So, uh, we could probably just move on to the next team. It looks like you're in a great spot. Uh, angsty Reaper next team that we have here, 10 team super flex PPR with a half point tight end premium. Uh, he has his team listed here. Josh Allen, uh, Justin Herbert as his top two quarterbacks. That will definitely do. Uh, Javante Williams, David Montgomery, AJ Dillon, mainly at running back DK Metcalf, T Higgins, Jalen Waddle, Elijah Moore, Gabriel Davis, mainly at wide receiver, Kyle Pitts at tight end also as the one Oh four in this draft two first next year. Um, his second doesn't have his third in 2023. And then he has all of his picks in 2024. We'll get to the trades in a second, but um, just look at the players that he acquired this offseason alone. Yeah, <laughs> so starving. anybody with a star beside them is uh, that somebody that he acquired. So he acquired Josh Allen, David Montgomery, DK Metcalf, T. Higgins, Jalen Waddle, Elijah Moore, Gabriel Davis, Curtis Samuel, Kyle Pitts. So definitely um, definitely did some shopping this offseason. He basically outlines kind of the timeline of his league here. He said it was his first year in a dynasty league. I don't know if it was last year or this offseason. He said he treated the startup like a redraft league, regrettably taking guys like Nick Chubb and Aaron Jones with his second and third round picks. He got eliminated. So it was last year, the startup got eliminated in the first round of the playoffs and decided to restructure wavered a little bit on whether I wanted to rebuild or try to compete, but ultimately focused on moving off of veterans, especially running backs in favor of a strong young core, uh, hopefully to build a monster over the next couple seasons. And he said, uh, obviously we've replied to a bunch of his comments and helped him out. Um, but he loved the full analysis, full breakdown of his team as a whole. So we can just go rapid fire on his his trades that he's made this offseason. Danny's got a huge shock look on his face because he's made some crazy trades. This is- but I'm just looking at all he's received and under, trying to wrap my head around that. Okay, so we're not going to break down all the trades individually, obviously, because we don't know what the details were. But what he ended up receiving versus what he gave up is the classic example of you know, redraft players versus dynasty players. I don't know how the fuck you ended up with some of this shit with some of the things that you gave up. Like, dude, that first half of that package, like Keenan Allen or uh, Keenan Allen, Debo Samuel, Jamar Chase for Josh Allen and Mark Andrews, like that, the first two players that Nix is like the best assets that you gave away in your first two assets that you received. He also made a recent trade that you guys can see there where he received Kyle Pitts for Mark Andrews and Darnell Mooney. I mean, Mark Andrews to a redraft style dynasty player probably has more value in their mind than Kyle Pitts, but he should not. So uh, I really love that trade for you. You've obviously made a, a easy transition from going from, you know, a redraft style dynasty player to more of a, an experienced dynasty player, understanding value accumulation. So 
great job of building this thing. You could probably relatively be competitive this year, given the strength of your quarterbacks. Like Allen and Herbert are going to carry this team. Your running backs are good enough to get by, and your wide receiver and tight end are going to carry your team too. Yeah, I mean, this is a phenomenal deal. And I, I'll talk on the Andrews uh, and Pitts deal real, real quickly as well. Uh, it's probably about a fair value deal if somebody's willing to contend. However, from a market value standpoint, from an appreciability standpoint, Mark Andrews is going to be a 28 year old tight end next year. Kyle Pitts is going to be a 22 year old tight end next year. Kyle Pitts is going to be the tight end one in Dynasty for the next, what, eight years, Bush, minimum? Eight years? Yeah, Kyle, Kyle Pitts is like barely 20. Is he even 22 yet? Not 22 yet. No. Yeah. He's, I'm older than how him. young of a tight end Kyle Pitts is the, the longevity of that position too. It's not a position that falls off at 27, like running back. He can play into his early thirties if he wants to, if he's that good, if, like we, you could be talking about getting Tony Gonzalez in his second season. Yes. Right now, and like with it, Kyle Pitts. if you're telling me right now that the opportunity cost to get six years of youth and upgrade at the position long-term with Kyle Pitts. Cause as much as I love Mark Andrews, I do still think that if Kyle Pitts is the ceiling, like he's a 14, 1500 yard, 10, 12 plus touchdown player, which you're getting at 22 years old. If you're telling me the opportunity cost to go from Andrews to Pitts is Darnell Mooney, which I think he's a fine player. I don't think he's it's probably worth that though. The 110, 111 this year. So Andrews in the 111 to go to Pitts like all day, every day. Yeah, give me Pitts. Exactly. And I, I probably wouldn't even value Mooney that high. It'd be like the 201 type yeah. area for me. So um, either way, let's move on to the next team. It looks like uh, Angsty Reapers well set up, doing a good job of uh, collecting value. We got uh, Jeremiah's team. You guys can see the team here. He's got Deshaun Watson, Derek Carr, Ryan Tannehill on, the, on his quarterback core. J.K. Dobbins, Josh Jacobs, Tyler Algier mainly at running back. Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, DK Metcalf, Devontae Smith, Amon Ross St. Brown, Kadarius Toney, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins at wide receiver. Pat Fryermuth and Trey McBride as his main tight ends. All of his picks in the next two draft classes. It's a super flex league, half PPR with a 1.5 tight end premium. So tight ends, very valuable in this league. You got two pretty solid ones, I would say. Also has some trades listed here. So he basically just asked, what direction should I go? It was his first ever super flex draft. How did I do? Just want to say this is an awesome team. This is an awesome team. Like you, you went low opportunity cost at running back, which I like. You're still going to get decent production. Dobbins, Jacobs should be in that top 15 ish type of area of running back. So I think you did well for an opportunity cost standpoint, not falling into the aging running back trap. Watson, great value there. Carr, Tanhill, I like how you kind of structure that core. That seems like a very Corey type of core. Wide receivers, where I'm loving it. CD Lamb, Justin Jefferson, DK Metcalf, Devontae Smith, Amon or St. Brown. Like you're quite literally like eight deep at wide receiver. And you, and you got have, guys that are going to appreciate in value. Like yes. Hopkins, once he's off suspension, Ridley. Calvin Ridley, once he's off suspension, those yep. guys should be, maybe Kadarius Tony has his situation clear up a little bit too. So yeah. Even the guys that are not your studs, not the dudes that you're going to rely on should be decent trade chips. If you wanted to take, you know, if DeAndre Hopkins is back on the field performing like a top 10 redraft wide receiver, once he's back there, maybe you can flip Derek Carr and DeAndre Hopkins to a contender because Deshaun Watson got suspended for the entire season for you. Maybe this is a house money year for you. And you flip Derek Carr and DeAndre Hopkins once he's back on the field for an upgrade at quarterback, a young guy, like maybe Zach Wilson's having like a, um, a breakout season or something like that. Yep. We can look at the deals too. Cause uh, I love both of these deals for you. Lamb and Javante are going relatively similar ADP and startup. So, for ease sake, I think that's that's a wash. I would much rather Daryl Henderson over Alec Pierce. I think Alec Pierce is a fine player. And I don't think, you know, if Akers is healthy, he's going to cede a role to Daryl Henderson. However, with Daryl Henderson, to put it simply, we talk about appreciating asset. We talk about an asset that can gain value in an instant. If Akers looks bad, if Akers gets hurt, if Akers, if anything happens to Akers from a volatility downside and risk standpoint, and Daryl Henderson is starting for a three, four week stretch this year. You're instantly netting probably a 2023, 20, two and three. And you're not getting that for Alec Pierce at any single point. So yeah, I'm Alec Henderson. Pierce is interesting because he's like a guy that's currently going in like the late second round of rookie drafts. But again, we're, we're talking about a notoriously weak draft class. He's He'd a be a third, third round pick year. last year, third round pick the year before. Just not that great of a prospect. So I would say relatively a wash of a deal, but I think you get yourself a little less fragile in the deal that you made where you get Lamb instead of Javante. And I think Lamb could explode in, in dynasty yes. value this year if he has a 1500 yard season or something. I said like they're relatively equal because, you know, startup ADP, they go close. But for the most part, if you were to go to the Lamb owner and offer him Javante, 
I would probably say 80% of the time you're probably getting denied. Yeah, I, I have them like right next to each other. So they're really, yeah. really close for me. So to me, this is like a relatively close deal. Yeah. You have Lamb a little higher than me, Javante a little bit lower. So this is probably why you're like yeah. way on the Lamb side. But uh, for me, it's pretty much a wash of a deal. Uh, Ridley and Tony, we can get into the next one here. Ridley and Tony easy. for Davis Mills. Yeah, give me Ridley and Tony. Da- Davis, Davis Mills, Mills is, a, is like the fragile version of like a quarterback asset. You get Calvin Ridley. Honest to God, Calvin Ridley is one of the few assets I can say in Dynasty will guaranteed be worth more next yes, year than he is worth right now. Well, he's one for, of the few assets I can say that about. If, if I were to rank these three assets, I would actually put Davis Mills third. So the fact that you got two of them and the two better assets on yeah. the same deal, like, yes. Davis Mills, yeah, could he, like, potentially surprise people? I would say that's a minimal chance. Texans are going to be a bad team. The Texans are going to have a top five pick. It is way more likely we're talking about Davis Mills in the same breath as Gardner Minshew next year than it is as Kirk Cousins. I mean, yeah. So at that point, I mean, realistically, like I like Kirk Cousins and obviously, you know, I would take Cousins over Ridley and, and Tony in a startup. But like, is that really like that massive of a loss of a deal? If that were to no, actually and go that's through? the 1% outcome for Davis. That's Miller, what I'm most saying. Likely. So like your bull case is maybe a slight loss on the deal if he ends up being Kirk Cousins, which again, as Corey said, is a very, very minimalistic outcome. So um, overall, yeah, Ridley and Tony, Ridley's going to be a seventh round startup pick next year as soon as he's on the field again. Yeah, Six, yeah seven? I agree. I think this is the type of team that I'd be looking to do a one-year productive struggle with because yes. I mean, Deshaun Watson's like the perfect example of why I want to do that. Same with DK Metcalf. Mid-season, if you can flip some of your older pieces like Derek Carr, like Ryan Tannehill, maybe Josh Jacobs is having a monster season as well. Um, and you can flip some of those guys for um, maybe younger pieces or more draft capital or whatever the case is. I'd be totally cool with doing something like that because if you could somehow build out a, a second elite quarterback, that would be ideal. If you could turn Derek Carr and Josh Jacobs mid-season into somebody – uh, at quarterback, maybe Justin Fields having a breakout season or something like that. I would uh, much rather do something like that, reboot this thing for 2023 once Deshaun Watson's situation clears up. But there's, I mean, there's a chance you could just even compete with this team. If Derek Carr and Ryan Tannehill can get it done for you at quarterback, your running backs really, you know, the best case scenario happens for them. That wide receiver core is going to be loaded and, and very, very productive for you this year. For sure. So uh, overall, you've done a great job. Just keep keep plugging away. Um, yeah, this team is very good, very well built. We can move on to the next game. That's going to be from Brandon. 12-team, one-quarterback league, six-point passing touchdown, along with a PPR and IDP scoring format. Um, quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Trey Lance. Oh, man, I wish that was, I a, wish super that was a super flex. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that was a super flex. <laughs> uh, running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Javante Williams, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara, wide receivers, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, Elijah Moore, Allen Robinson, Robert Woods, et cetera. There, the tight end, you have Hawkinson, Komet, and Thomas. Uh, along with a couple IDPs there. I don't really know the value, but I know Bosa, Leonard. Yeah, I imagine Darius so. Leonard, Joey Bosa are pretty valuable. Yep. Along with all the 11th overall picks this year and all of his future first uh, or future picks next year. So basically just says here came in second. What moves uh, would you try to make, if any, to improve this uh, to make it a monster team? Who am I looking, hoping to add at 111? To put it simply, with this team, I'm not looking to add anybody at the 111. I'm packaging that with TJ Hawks and I'm going for a superstar tight end. Yeah, that's that's not where my eyes went to first, but that's definitely a good. Uh, my eyes went to you're really deep at running back. I would probably get more fragile at that position than strong. And after wide receiver, receiver. that's so another way. If you can flip Joe Mixon straight into AJ Brown right now, which is definitely a possibility given some people's evaluation of those two players, I would easily do something like that. If you, like I don't mind holding one of those uh, veteran running backs, whether it's Kamara or Mixon, probably Kamara right now. I would now. tell Kamara. Just because Kamara is is the is, is potentially getting suspended, people might not value him very highly on the market. I think Mixon will fetch you a much better wide receiver than Kamara will. Um, I don't mind flipping Mixon into a superstar wide receiver if you can get one. Um, and maybe you have to use your 111 to get, you know, if you can go Mixon and 111 for a real superstar wide receiver, um, like Lamb or Jefferson or Chase or something like that, that's an easy move to make. Uh, it, it's really all going to depend on your league market here. But, I mean, you're well set up at every position, really, other than tight end that you have huge difference makers at those positions and your, your team kind of runs through your running backs, which is something I'd caution you a little bit about. I would rather have to rely on, you know, JT Javante Williams and maybe just Camara than have yep. four deep at running backs and two, have a much better wide receiver one, two or three running backs of fragility at all times. And then fill out with like your Pollard, your hunt, your McKissick, your James white guys that can, you know, step into a flex if needed, but realistically building around more than two or three running backs, I would say is uh 
it's a bad process because of the fragility of the position. So if you can, again, maneuver one of them into a stud wide receiver and another move, maybe you, you might look at maybe, you know, Camara and Camara and receiver, like maybe Camara and Woods might get you a hunt. And what's another like receiver around the four or five round range? Like Marquise Brown, Mike Marquise Brown. Junior. Yeah. Marquise yeah. Brown, Marquise Brown, Kareem Hunt for Camara and Robert Woods. You get younger, yeah. you get elite talent at wide receiver. The other move I was going to say, uh, surely somebody in your league might need a quarterback, especially in a six-point passing touchdown league. Can you get value for Joe Burrow? Because realistically, yeah, you don't need him. If you you got Josh Allen, Trey Lance is a fine backup for Josh Allen. You do not need Joe Burrow. So maybe you want to sell the base owner. Back. Maybe you want to take Burrow and and Mixon and sell them for Jefferson or something like that. Yeah, I, I I would I would do that in a heartbeat if you can do that. Uh, you sell the idea of the the Mixon sack maybe. Who knows? Maybe the guy who has um, Justin Jefferson. Yeah, I was just supposed to say the guy who has Jamar Chase or T. Higgins also has Justin Jefferson for some more reason. Or something yeah. Like, that. like, yeah, you, you, you explore that 100 times out of 100. Yeah, so there's a number of moves that you could make. If I mean, worst case scenario, you probably don't need to do anything with this team. You could probably go into this uh, mm-hmm. season with the exact team that you have and be very competitive. But I would, you know, explore some moves for an extra tight uh, for a tight end upgrade, like Danny said. Explore some moves to potentially acquire a stud wide receiver, get less fragile at running back, and maybe also show uh, shop Joe Burrow around and see what you can get for him. Do you think T.J. Hawkinson the one eleven? I probably probably need to throw in the two eleven as well. T.J. Hawkinson one eleven two eleven probably not for Pitts, maybe for Andrews. Maybe I, I would be cool, honestly, going good. up to T.J. Hawkinson in the one eleven for like Kittle and like a third. Yeah, I'd be fine with that as I well. Think we'll doing that. I think Kittle you won't have to pay that. Right, tight. You might not have to pay that. You might what? have to pay TJ Hawkinson, Hawkinson to 11. 11 for Kittle. Let's move on to the next team, the final team of the video, currently at about 44 minute mark. That's going to be from Power Man. So uh, I'll let you take it away with Power Man's team. Yeah, I believe we cut out a bunch of shit here. So probably not at the 44 minute mark, but 12 teams, super flex, no tight end premium here. Um, he starts, uh, looks like, yeah. So one quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, pretty standard, two flexes and a defense as well. Team on the screen there, Joe Burrow, Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield. So a little weak at quarterback in a tight end, pre- in a uh, super flex league. Brees Hall, Isaiah Spiller mainly at running back. Wide receivers, Jamar Chase, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Elijah Moore, Darnell Mooney. Definitely strong point there. And then T.J. Hawkinson reels, rears his ugly head again at tight end. Uh, four first-round picks, though, in 2023. Two first-round picks in 2024. So a team that's built really strong at the foundation, I would say. When you have a foundation of the wide receivers that he has, and Joe Burrow is a foundational quarterback, Brees Hall is a foundational running back, you're definitely on the right track with this team for sure. He mentions here uh, he's not sure how he feels because he has a couple trades listed here. So I'll go through the trades. Uh, he gave up Brian Tannehill, MT, Gabe Davis, and Adam Troutman for TJ Hawkinson and a 2023 first. If we're looking at market value, I mean, realistically, MT is probably around Hawkinson from a market I mean, value in standpoint. actual like market value, Hawkinson's pretty far above him. But like how we value it, it's probably pretty similar. Yeah, so let's just like for E sake cancel that out. And then you're talking Tannehill, Gabe Davis, and Troutman for 2023 first. Give me the 2023 first. He also so, says too that three of his first should be top half of the first round yeah. pick. So I don't know if this was one of them, but if that's a it's an early first, then yeah, give me the early first in Hawkinson. I mean, even a mid mid first, I'm like mid, maybe even late. Like I'm fine with liquidating my assets. Plus too, the the, the underrated part is Again, we mentioned uh, not looking at trades at face value, but in terms of the opportunity cost that they present with TJ Hawkinson, you know you can end up liquidating TJ Hawkinson. Maybe, do you think TJ Hawkinson in a 2024 two gets you up to a 2024 one? Maybe. And if we're looking I, at a tw- I, I probably wouldn't make that trade though. You're. It seems like you're real low on Hawkinson if that's a deal that you're going to make. You wouldn't make that deal? No. What? I would need a, I would need a probably a first straight up for like Hawkinson in a three or Hawkinson in like a low end asset. I'm taking the first side all day, but either yeah, way, yeah, again, that, that makes some sense. But either way, let's let's move on to the next deal here. I we just got. wanted to say though, if you're liquidating Tannehill, MT, Gabe Davis, and Troutman, and you're getting a 2023 and 2024 first, you're taking the first. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you can get that. That's for sure. Um, so, but yeah, move on to the next deal. Yeah. Either way, nice nice trade on the first one. Gave Rashad Penny for the yes. two five pre draft. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, Kenneth Walker gets gets drafted by the Seahawks. Rashad Penny's value took a nosedive. Um, so great, great move there. Good uh, proactive. So you might have watched the video that I made before the draft that said sell these running backs before the NFL draft. Gave Let's Amari go. Cooper in the 205 for DK Metcalf. That's just fucking absolutely <laughs> absurd. It's wait, wait, wait. There. wait, wait. So you're telling me you gave Amari Cooper in Rashad Penny for DK Metcalf? 
Yes. Basically, yeah. 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 <laughs> Easy money. Next deal gave Najee for how did you get yeah, Jamar like, Chase? This is, plus? this is why I understand why Danny's always saying to sell Najee Harris because if you can get Jamar Chase and Elijah Moore for him, like, yeah, That's I'm going to sell Najee Harris. I'm higher on Najee Harris dynasty than you are. But when this is the market value of a player, you want to exploit that market inefficiency because he should not be straight up valued over Jamar Chase, let alone Jamar Chase and Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore could be on the Najee side and I would still want Jamar Chase. <laughs> Except you got Chase and Elijah Moore. I don't know how you finagled this guy into giving you that, but well done there. Next deal uh, gave Jahan Dotson, Deontay Foreman for 20, yes, 2023. I love Jahan Dotson, but you give me a random first and I'm taking it. Um, gave CEH, Rojo, and a late second for an early second and a 2024 first. So, I mean, you give away the Chiefs backfield and a late second for a 2023 yes. early second. And it's one, I might have even done that just for the early second, let alone the 2024 first. Yes. So, like, uh, definitely a great move there. He said his rookie draft is snake style. So, his uh, 2023 second should be very late. Okay. So, that's, that's interesting to know that your rookie draft is snake style. The second I received is the defending champ, so it should be very early. So uh, interesting dynamic. I've never actually played in a snake draft style uh, rookie draft, but uh, definitely um, I would say you're on. You're in a great spot here. You have foundational wide receivers. You have one foundational quarterback in Joe Burrow, a foundational running back, if that exists, with Brees Hall because he's 21 years old, barely. And uh, TJ Hawkinson is your main tight end that Danny, of course, wants you to sell. But you have a lot of draft capital to be able to add you know, probably a Bijan to this team. You got three firsts in the top half. You have pretty good odds of getting the one one there, if not adding a Gibbs and, you know, Boutte types, um, probably another quarterback to this core as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just talking about if you it. You walked I mean, out of your rookie draft next year because you have four firsts. If you walked out of your rookie draft with, you know, Bijan Robinson, CJ Stroud, Jordan Addison, and Sean Tucker, that would be a, a huge, huge W for you. Yep. No, I agree. Uh, so either way, any closing thoughts or should we wrap this video up? Now we can wrap this video up. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, comment any of your thoughts down below, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you're wondering, guys, it's fucking June. Why are you still talking Dynasty? Don't worry. Redraft rankings, way too early. Redraft rankings coming the rest of this week. We should be live uh, on yesterday. When you guys are watching this, we're about to go live. We're recording this beforehand. Um, so if you want to go back and watch that, you can go back and watch that, obviously. Uh, if you want to be member or... Ugh. If you want to be a part of future episodes of Dynasty Decisions, as always, check out the Patreon. First priority goes to our patrons, and then second priority goes to whoever, you know, first come, first serve, Twitter, Discord, email. You guys can submit your teams that way in Excel format. As always, uh, we definitely appreciate when you guys do that. But with that being said, peace out. We'll talk to you soon.